What's going on? Raven Ritual 666 back from the dead with some more Diablo 4 content. Today I'm very excited to bring to you my Chain Lightning build for Season 6 and the Vessel of Hatred. This build will be using the new Aeropedition Mythic Unique Helmet and the Tyrael's Might to make sure we have a nice balance of damage and survivability. With this build, you'll be able to solo all Torment 4 content. It is such a fun way to play because we have got maximum resistance thanks to our Tyrael's Might. We've got extra damage reduction thanks to our Tyrael's Might and we're already able to reach our armor cap. So with our barrier, uh, we have a very nice playstyle between damage and survivability. Um, in the build description below, I have three different setups. I have the Raiment version, the Fist of Fate version, and the Frostburn version. Uh, this build guide is over on Mobilitics, so please come check out my profile down below. I've officially joined Mobilitics as a, a content creator, so I'm super proud for that opportunity. Uh, so big thank you to Mobilitics for that. But per personally, I like the Frostburn setup. We get an extra form of damage. Each different skill tree is different depending on the build that you're going to play with. If you get a max roll for GA Fist of Fate, then run that version. But ideally, I think the Frost Burns are better because we get an extra source of damage, which really helps when you're pushing through to Pit 80 and farming those Torment bosses. Uh, when we're looking at the Mercenaries, uh, I'll come to that later, but I do want to touch on it right now. If you're running Raymond, you're going to be super squishy. Yes, it's going to be able to allow you to push much higher through the pits, but you're going to have a tough time. You're going to keep dying. You are going to lose runs. You aren't going to be able to farm your glyph level as quick as you would like. So for me, the Tyrael's Might version is the easiest playstyle because you are quite tanky. And even from like pit 100, I'm able to survive in pit 110 when I'm playing with those OP spirit borns to try to get those glyphs leveled. Now at the moment, I only have my glyphs leveled to like 80. They're not even max. I don't even have perfectly optimized gear from a master working level and I'm comfortably doing a pet 80 as you can see here. So kind of how the gameplay works, well you just pop your unstable currents, um, you pop your ice armor because of storm soil you get some extra damage and you just pop right in there and you sit in the middle of the mob freezing everything thanks to frost burns and lucky hit chance to freeze and you can do a ton of damage. There is two different uh, key passives and I do rotate between them um, Shatter I normally do for my pet runs for the mobbing otherwise the rest of the content I run enlightenment for the extra attack speed and the extra damage uh, this run here was actually an enlightenment run on pit 80 I've been able to do both so depending on your playstyle and where your damage is at mess around with your key passives like Shatter and enlightenment but I do recommend always running enlightenment if you're farming a Format for boss. So, taking a look at our gear, there is a lot that goes into it, and I've done a ton of testing in order to optimize this build. Uh, stay tuned because when we look at our Paragon later, there are some shenanigans you may want to run depending on where you are. Mind you, this is not a leveling build, this is an end game build. Um, unless you have some of the right aspects to solve those mana problems early on, then you won't be able to set this up without the right gear. So, having a look at it, we are running the new Mythic Air of Perdition. Uh, it gives us 200% damage to angels and demons. Uh, it's a bit of a, a trick there. Currently, there's nothing that's an angel in the game, but you never know what might be to come. Uh, but 200% to demons, uh, additive damage. You will find some bosses and certain um, enemy types are demons. For example, like the Knights of the Penitent aren't a demon, uh, so you don't really get that value there. But a lot of the bosses that you will face and a lot of enemies through pits and around in Sanctuary do count as a demon, so you do get that buff. But it comes with crit chance, lucky hit chance, movement speed, and plus to core skills. And succumb to hatred, you get Mother's Favor, which is a 60% multiplicative damage bonus, which is unbelievably good. So talking about some of the things we swap out, if you are running some Pit 100s with some OP Spirit Borns, Perdition is nice because you can keep up with them because you're kind of fast along with the movement speed from Tyrael's. But if you do want a little bit more survivability plus Pit 100, Pit 110, 
I run a God Slayer Crown because I've got a triple GA. Uh, the max life is very nice to have, and it just helps keep you alive a little bit if you're at plus pit 100. You won't be doing much damage, but you will be alive, which counts. I've centered this around Tyrael's just because of the resistance cap. I, I feel you're going to have a much easier time playing Chain Lightning with Tyrael's compared to the Raymond. Raven is stronger because you've got the ranks to glass cannon, you can stun them more frequently to get a lot more damage to them, but with Tyrael's, you've got that damage reduction, you're instantly hitting res cap, you've got a little bit of movement speed, which is nice, and for some reason, with Tyrael's might and our lucky hit uh, to restore primary resource, it seems to prop more frequently from our divine barrage compared to Raven, so it does kind of help a little bit with your resource cost. This is my Frostburns. If you don't have a good pair of Frostburns, it's okay. You can completely run this build. I think I did a pet 78 with my Fist of Fate setup. I don't even have the greatest pair. I only have a single GA. Uh, Fist of Fate are amazing. If you are struggling on mana, uh, run Fist of Fate because you get a lot of lucky hit chance. And the way we solve mana with this build is with lucky hit. Chance to restore primary resource up to you know, 66%. So I've got a 64.6% roll. That is wonderful. Um, I have enough lucky hit chance because of Tau Rashes and the Ring of Starless, but I've also tempered onto my amulet lucky hit chance to restore 25% primary resource. So because I have the right tempers on my amulet uh, for lucky hit chance to restore primary resource and on my focus, I am comfortable enough with my mana to swap to Frostburns. If you are not quite there, because I believe this is the better endgame setup, run Fist of Fate. As long as you have an ancestral focus with Lucky Hit Chance to re Restore Primary Resource, you should be fine, especially with the Aerop Edition. But without the Aerop Edition and the God Slayer Crown, um, I feel like run God Slayer Crown and Fist of Fate. Um, otherwise, if you've got the Aerop Edition, I think you're comfortable with the lucky hit chance you have to run the Frost Burns to do extra damage. Now, in the Mobilitics build guide, you will see there is a different skill tree set up for both because there's a few points you need to change around if you are getting the bonus damage with Cold. So, um, keep an eye on that in the build description. Uh, Axial Conduit, uh, it's a must-have. It's so important for Chain Lightning because it allows you to do uh, the big damage hit. Um, my pair here is at least a max aspect. I would love two or three GA so I could get more ranks of chain lightning and chain lightning to hit twice. I don't feel like I need the GA to DR because I am running Tyrael's, but if you're running Raymond, I think it's a must have a GA on the damage reduction. For the boots, you still want attacks, reduce, evades, cooldown. It helps you to relocate when you are in the middle of a mob and fighting enemies. You can just like keep spamming chain lightning and you can press dodge to move. Or oh, a poison puddle is about to go off. Dodge while still spamming. Or oh, a fire puddle is about to go off. Keep spamming. Dodge. 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 So you can keep using your movement without taking off your spam of your core skill of chain lightning. So it's very nice for that movement just to relocate yourself in case there's like a super bad hit that might take your barrier away or if your barrier does somehow go down uh, you can you know move around for your weapon um, a, a sword is going to be better than a dagger but a dagger is still okay for the damage to close uh, best in slot would be intelligence max life and crit damage uh, but use what you have uh, I got a 2 GA so I'm rocking that the best Master working would be uh, triple crit damage or two and one would be nice to have, but you want to temper chance for chain lightning to hit twice and the critical strike damage. It is very important. And lightning rod is amazing. Lightning rod does a massive amount of damage. I've tested this with the splintering. I've tested lightning rod and splintering. Um, I still feel this is the better setup, uh, but I will play with splintering a little bit more in the future. So. Uh, for your amulet, um, you, I've got intelligence, crit chance, and total armor. You need to have total armor. You need to have total armor once as an affix and twice as the temper in order to reach armor cap. I mean, potentially, if you got, you could get total armor uh, instead of resistance to all elements, and maybe 
go a different route, but you're probably still going to fall short. So the easiest way to get your armor cap is total armor as an affix on your amulet, temper it, and then chuck in skull gems. Bang, bang, bang. Rings and amulet, baby. Get that armor capped. Um, probably now I can take off the resistance to all elements on these boots. Uh, it's something I can ch check later. But for your boots, you still want Lucky Hit Chance to Freeze. If you don't get Lucky Hit Chance to Freeze and you're running Frost Burns, Lucky Hit Chance to Stun is also very nice. It's probably a, a damage increase. I might actually change these boots to that, considering I'm running Tyrials. But with the Fist of Fate set up, you have to. I mean, you have to have Lucky Hit Chance to Freeze in order to do damage to frozen enemies to get the Shatter proc from your key passive. Uh, Tower Rashes. Ring of Silas, best in slot, same as every other season on Sork build. Uh, Tower Rushes has changed this season. Uh, my last build was the Andarial's Visage version uh, with Starlight. If you don't get um, a decent pair of gloves and you don't have the focus with Lucky Hit Chance to Restore Primary Resource, you can run Andarial's Visage if you're lucky enough to get that as a Mythic early and run starlight aspect on your amulet it's still very strong it will solve all your mana problems and then you don't need lucky hit chance to restore resource and you could put on crit damage or cooldown reduction or crit chance would be very nice to have there but this is definitely the best end game setup so far from my testing tower rushes obviously ga on the cooldown reduction it's nice to have you probably want to hit uh, either lucky hit chance and cooldown reduction or cooldown reduction and nozzle physical damage uh, either or is nice but you want to prioritize a max roll aspect you don't need the four stacks of tower rushes anymore uh, it does the same amount of damage just from casting pyromancy shock and frost skills which is awesome ring of stylus is amazing crit chance is best because we can reach crit cap with this current setup i've got a hundred percent crit chance which means every cast is a crit it is really awesome to have and for our focus um, it is imperative that you have lucky hit chance to restore primary resource. Um, max life is amazing because it makes us much less squishy and, you know, anything else you get is kind of good. Whether you get crit chance, if you're not at the 100% cap, cooldown reduction is also very nice to have. Um, so kind of play with that third roll. I just got damage. It's all I've got for now. And then tempering the same as our dagger or sword. Uh, you want to have chance for chain lines hit twice and critical strike damage. Uh, if you get a fist of fate, I mean the old RNG gloves, you need to have as high roll on everything as possible. The lucky hit chance to apply a random crowd control effect is actually super nice because you can get so many crowd controls, especially on a boss, to stun them so fast. So I really do love the fist of fate setup, especially for how quick you can stun bosses. Uh, we got a Raymond. Uh, ideally, you want the GA to the glass cannon on the raiment. That would be better than ele uh, elemental attunement and shocking impact and as high an aspect as possible. Now, for my amulet, I don't, ideally, I wouldn't want the crit chance here and I would want like ranks to conjuration mastery GA or ranks to devouring blaze as a GA, which would probably increase the damage further. Uh, intelligence still seems pretty nice, but... If you don't, uh, you could go total armor, maximum life. Crit chance is good. Total armor, maximum life intelligence. Uh, but you want to probably get at least one passive. And there's three passives that we all know and love. I think for the Tyrials, the best in slot would be Glass Cannon. But if you are running the Raiment, with the Raiment you would want Conjuration Mastery or Devouring Blaze. Because you don't want too many stacks of Glass Cannon because you will die. You will definitely die. Looking at the runes, uh, there is a bit that we change depending on our gear. So, with Tyrials, we actually run Lith and Cry because we don't get the pull-in effect from Raymond. So, we need a way to pull in all enemies so we can still get the Shatter proc. So, by standing still, using our Lith, every time we're casting a non-channeling core skill, which is our chain lightning, we, every few seconds, we just pull in enemies, and we pull in enemies, and we can position ourselves with our dodge, pull in enemies, and get those lovely big shadow procs. So, it's very nice to have, and we're survival, we have enough survivability, I should say, with materials to stand there and kind of tank any extra damage. For the pants, um, we want to be running 
Um, sorry, uh, casting the non-channel core skill here with the war cry for the 15% damage buff. And we want to actually, while we're standing still, um, to cast cry. Uh, so that's the very nice change. But when I run Raymond, because I'm often moving quite quick, I kind of change that up. I run the bulwark shield with um, the back. So uh, to make sure that every 30 meters I travel when I'm teleporting, because you're teleporting frequently, uh, I can stay in that bulwark shield. Well, we're going to take a look at our paragon board because i do want to talk about some of the shenanigans you might need to pull depending on your paragon level before we look at the skill tree so there are six glyphs that are really good for our paragon board with your starter board and if it's your first time leveling this depending on how many paragon board points you have just go for the glyph so you want to stick up right side you want to pick up Elementals. You want to make sure you at least have 40 out of 40 intelligence minimum. Grab your rare nodes, then move into the next board. Grab Flame Feeder. This is really nice for our DR and our burning because we're using Firebolt enchantment. Um, so that is nice to have into the next board. And then we come across and we get Unleashed. This really solves our mana problems. And pick up just what you need. The couple of the rare glyphs. Come through. Get the Legendary Node Frigid of Fate to increase your damage and then into your next board to get initially reinforced uh, you don't want to run exploit for your first cliff you probably want to run reinforced every time i took off reinforced i was dying even with tyrials because that 15 percent damage reduction while you have a barrier is unbelievably good so I kind of ran reinforced here and I changed the points around to make sure I had the willpower for the bonus uh, for my first time while leveling until I got Static Surge and pushed into the final board where we use Destruction for the crit damage and we get the new board Legendary Node uh, to get extra damage from every time we apply Vulnerable. But if you're below, let's say, Paragon 150-ish, uh, you might want to run... Uh, static surge as your second board because this is how chain lightning applies vulnerable without static surge you are going to have a really tough time applying vulnerable which means you're not going to get the damage procs from the rest of our skills so if you need to and you're a, a kind of new player to diablo you're, you're leveling a sorcerer for the first time you're maybe a bit more casual and you're not you know paragon 200 or 250 second board goes static surge and then follow the same kind of path. Um, or just swap this board with this board to make sure that you can still get your Unleashed for the mana regen. Uh, but yeah, this is quite an important legendary node. And Exploit is my end game setup. But initially, yeah, definitely. You don't want that. You want the extra DR to stay alive. And then you start to fill in the blanks, right? You've got all glyphs. You've got... Everything filled out. All right, fill in these nodes. Get the extra damage buffs. And then start chasing what you need. You're like, all right, do I need uh, lightning resistance? No, I don't need resistance. I'm running materials. Oh, I'm a raiment setup. Oh, I could use resistance. That's nice. Oh, resistance to all elements. I'm running raiment and max life. That might be a really nice node to go to. Max life. Oh, I'm raiment. I'm dying. But for materials, uh, we then just want to come through here and just grab all of this damage reduction. There is no cap on damage reduction, which is amazing. So we should be able to get, oh, I don't want to say a number, but like 70% maybe DR eventually with this build at Paragon 300. There is a lot we're going to get um, out of here. Um, plus the max life node. So with the max life, the additional damage reduction, we're going to feel really strong and really viable. Um, into the end game. So this is how I'm currently staying alive for like pit 110 plus. Taking a look over on Mobilytics, you can see here that I have three different setups depending on what I'm running. I have the Frostburn variant, which I think is my preferred method of playstyle, the Fist of Fate, and the Raiment. Uh, as you can see, these skills change depending on what we're running and along with the skill tree. Uh, in the interest of keeping this video short, I'm not going to go through all of them, but I'll kind of look at just the frost burns. So, chain lightning, 
Flame Shield. Flame Shield makes us immune. Uh, it's very nice for those pits, especially if you're going to get hit by one of those uh, debuff stacks, and it allows you to be immortal for a couple of seconds. Uh, we do run Lightning Spear because we get two casts. That's two Conjurations, and it applies Vulnerable. It's nice to have. Teleport. Uh, either we teleport on the spot just for a barrier, or we teleport when moving into a mob. So when we move across screen or we skip through walls, we can enter a fight with a barrier up. Ice armor. Ice armor works amazing with our storm as well because we get a bunch of bonus damage. And it's with our skills, it's almost infinitely off cooldown, which is nice to have. And unstable currents uh, is our ultimate, and it's the best ultimate that Sorcerer has to offer. Uh, we run Firebolt because we get the DR uh, to burning uh, from burning enemies, and we get damage to burning enemies with our Flame Fleet of Glyphs. So that's why it's really important. And Ice Blades again. Uh, it keeps casting when it's an enchantment, which helps with our cooldowns. So looking at the skills, uh, you just run two in a fireball. We pop that as our enchantment. Three into elemental dominance. If we're running the raiment version, we do put an additional three points into potent warding because we need the resistance, uh, but not for this endgame setup. Five chain lightning all the way through to getting the extra damage from chain lightning over there. One point in a flame shield is all we need. One to teleport, one all the way through to uh, the 30% damage reduction. Again, more damage reduction, nice to have. We pick up the cheeky point into Elemental Attunement for a chance for either Ice Armor, Teleport, or Flame Shield to come off cooldown. Three points into Damp and Layer because we've got 6% damage reduction with the barrier. Again, more damage reduction, we love it here. Ice Armor all the way through to Shimmering Ice Armor. This is what allows us to have Ice Armor off cooldown all the time per mana we spend, and we spend a lot of mana with this build. Uh, we grab one just for the lucky hit chance. Uh, it is a lot of lucky hit to restore our mana, so we might as well take one. Uh, we go Ice Blades all the way through. They apply Vulnerable, which doesn't matter with Chain Lightning, but 20% uh, of Ice Blades cooldown reduction is applied to your other skills. So we get a nice little bit of passive cooldown reduction, because you will see sometimes three Ice Blades flying around. Uh, based on the picking that up as an enchantment. So you don't need to equip that as a skill. One point here just to get the three points. Uh, so we get the barrier using a cooldown grazi barrier. That's how we get it. Uh, three points here for conjuration mastery for the extra damage per conjuration we are flying around. And we'll have familiars from unstable currents. Ice armor. Uh, uh, ice blade, sorry. Flying around because of our enchantment. And two lightning spears every time we cast that and we pick up lightning spear all the way through to a chance to um stun when they critically strike and lightning spear almost always critically strikes and we pick up the two to familiars at this point in time familiar is bugged with unstable currents every time you cast unstable currents it's casting fire familiars it's meant to cast lightning familiars now, if we had the Lightning Familiars, we would grab Invoked Familiar and maybe even take one out of Barrier because we get 10% more damage with our Lightning skills. But at the moment, it is bugged, and with our Lightning Cast, um, our Auto Cast, I should say, we keep getting Fire Familiars. That's why with the Raiment setup, we don't run Firebolt Enchantment. Yes, I know it's more DR. Yes, I know uh, we grab flame feeder for more damage to burning enemies but we get free fire familiars which can burn enemies so uh that is kind of the setup we have with raiment for the real big damage crazy pit push where you might rip a few times compared to the raiment setup but i, I feel this is much better uh 30 dr every time you spend 100 mana we spend a lot of mana all the time it's nice to have Three points here for barrier duration. Obviously, we've one point into Inner Flames. We want the Devouring Blaze for the damage to burning and the crit damage to crowd control enemies. Just one point, just so we can um, uh, pick that bonus up through our amazing Paragon board. Uh, into here, we want three points into killing a burning enemy for the mana regen. It's a very nice source of mana regeneration. One point of permafrost we don't really care about. Three points into Horfrost because we get up to 18% increased damage to frozen enemies. And with the Frostburns version, we run Icy Touch because we get 12% increased cold damage to vulnerable enemies. Everything is vulnerable. And with Frostburns, we have a lucky hit to do direct cold damage. So that is a very big buff with the Frostburn gloves. Three points 
uh, because uh, we get increased damage with all elements and 12% cooldown reduction explains itself and all the way our unstable currents until the end and then you rotate this right depending on what you're doing you can take out shatter and run enlightenment enlightenment's better for bosses shatter's better for pits but swap to your liking if you really have a tough time with your mana gen and you have a bad attack speed well enlightenment might be better for you Okay, well that is it for our skills, but yeah, come check it out on Mobilytics, uh, link is in the description below, uh, uh, have a good look at which setup works for you, and whereabouts you are at in your current journey in the Vessel of Hatred. Having a look over at our mercenaries, uh, we do run Subo and Oldkin, Oldkin as the reinforcement, so we'll start with Oldkin, because we keep him the same across all variants. So, his... Skill, 20 second cooldown, Field of Languish, Olken desiccates an area for 6 seconds slowing enemies by 40% and reducing their damage dealt by 20%. More damage reduction, more survivability for high pit tiers. But also we get a lot of value from him slowing enemies out of our Devouring Blaze passive because we increase our crit damage to crowd controlled enemies. So that is wonderful to have. We just chucked that on Chain Lightning because it's our auto spam. It means every 20 seconds, Oldkin's up, doing his little dance, doing his little slow on enemies, desiccating areas. We love that little guy. It's kind of cool. Um, for our main, we do run Subo. Uh, Subo because uh, Seek is pretty good because he marks enemies and uh, helps with our maximum resource, uh, which is kind of nice. Uh, but the main reason we want to pop over is to Wire Trap. Uh, he does a little bit of damage, but he stuns enemies. Again, more stun means we get more crit damage to enemies that are crowd controlled, which is wonderful to have. Uh, then we pick up, it now pierces through enemies. We come down here for cover fire. Uh, it slows enemies. More crowd control means more chance of us doing higher crit damage. And finally, we just want to pick up. Uh, we get 25% increased critical strike damage to enemies hit by his cover fire for four seconds so it really helps us to buff the crit damage which is our foundation of the build now if we are running raiment uh we kind of want to pick up rahir uh the reason we want rahir um uh, is actually the other side so you would want to pick up with raiment you would come down here you want the ground slam you want the 15 percent resistance to all elements which is really nice to have um, and then he's got that chance that he can cast a barrier when you're about to die, which keeps you alive. And then 15% um, increased damage from it and 25% increased damage from us, uh, for, uh, allies afflicted by Rahir's Bastion. So you take Rahir for Raiment, but you take Subo if you're running the Tyrael setup. So that is it for the build guide. Um, that is my... Ravens, Error Perdition, Tyrael's end game build to help you blast into Torment 4 and solo all content. Uh, if you've liked this video, please hit the subscribe button down below. It's completely free. Comes with a money back guarantee. I'm also live on Twitch over on uh, on Twitch on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. If you need gear, you need advice, you're chasing runes that you don't have to craft one of them, please come and visit me. I'm happy to help you out or even just to power level your glyphs, whatever you need, I'm always willing to support our community. Um, otherwise, uh, thank you so much. If you have any other information that you're looking at, I've tried to write it all up in the Mobilytics guide below. Uh, all those things you do and just being here means the world to me. I appreciate you so much. I will see you on the next one.